All right, turn with me to uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, please. 1 Peter chapter 5. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen. Amen. So, 1 Peter chapter 5. I'm going to probably read from the Amplified today. 1 Peter chapter 5. Now, we've been in a series entitled, The Importance of Your Pastor. So, the importance of your pastor. We've been looking at that, the importance of and last week, more recently, or two weeks ago, excuse me, we looked at why Jesus gave pastors or why Jesus made pastors. For the sake of a bit of a review on that, um, we're going to look at First Peter 5 to begin. But let me just say this a little bit. We talked about the importance of your pastor. That's the overriding series that we've been um, teaching on, and it's really critical for our lives. And what we've been doing is really reestablishing the premise for our relationship as a local church, but also you're laying the premise, the foundation for your relationship with your pastors and your our relationship with you. It's really important. And some of the things that I'm teaching, uh, to me, they're pretty basic things, but they're things that a lot of believers don't understand. And I've said to you before that in any relationship, if you don't understand the purpose of the relationship, if you don't understand the boundaries, the parameters, the reason for the purpose for the relationship, then, then you can be abused in those relationships. So the same, just like the same thing goes naturally, the th- same thing can go spiritually. Another reason why this is so important, I really believe never have we been in a time where the understanding of the pastor relationship is necessary. I think there's gross abuse right now. There's gross perversions of authority and uh, people just listening and following just anybody. And so um, this, I believe, is an answer to some of those issues. So uh, I believe this is helping you. And uh, let us know if this message is helping your life and is ministering to you, um, helping you to make the right adjustments. Let us know, amen, by sending us a, a note, a testimony, so we can rejoice with you and thank God for the word that is given to us. So now... First Peter chapter 5, verse 1. Likewise, you who are younger and of lesser rank, be sub... No, sorry, go back. I got to go back up. So verse 1. I warn and counsel the elders among you, the pastors and spiritual guides of the church, as a fellow elder and as a witness, an eyewitness called to testify of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a sharer in the glory, the honor and splendor that is to be revealed, to disclosed and, and unfolded, tend. Now he's talking to shepherds, pastors like myself, and it says, tend, nurture, guard, guide, fold, and feed the flock of God. That is your responsibility. Not by coercion or constraint, but willingly. Someone say willingly. See, God's always looking for the willingness, that willingness is a spiritual condition, not dishonorably motivated by the advantages and profits belonging to the office, but eagerly and cheerfully. So God wants pastors to be cheerful about what they do. Amen. Someone in our church, they always pray and they say, I pray for my pastors that they they minister and lead with a happy heart. I just love that. Not domineering as arrogant, dictatorial, and overbearing persons over those in your charge, but being examples. Someone say examples. Examples. And it says patterns and models of... What? examples. Isn't it interesting? In every arena of life, we seek examples. If anyone wants to be a boxer, they look for examples. They look for people they can pattern themselves after. Oftentimes, they'll get a mentor, a coach in just any arena. Why? To help them be the best in their particular um, profession. And so in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 9, listen to what it says here. He says, now, it was... Um, It was not because we do not have the right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. A what? 
example. Look at this one. I'm just skipping over real quickly. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. This is Paul speaking to Timothy. Just want to show with you the early church. They were big on leaders being examples. Pastors were examples. Verse, verse 12. So 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. 12. Everyone found it? Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers and what? A what? Is everybody reading this or just one person? An example. An, someone say example. 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 Be, but set the believers an example. Then he tells you how. In speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Someone say example again. Example. So he told Timothy, now be an example. You're younger, a younger leader, but he says, I want you to be an example. And he says, you be an example in how you speak, speak in the manner of your life, how you carry yourself, in how you love, the, the, the compassion you show, in your faith walk, in your purity. Everyone see that? Go to the next, um, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Just reviewing a couple things we, we looked at last time. Because we saw, maybe to our surprise, is the, um, the overriding purpose of the call of the pastor is to be an example. So Jesus, the kingdom of God, needs examples of God's kingdom in the earth. Now look at this, um, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Which is why I suffer as I do, but I'm not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I'm convinced that he's able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Verse 13, follow the pattern of the sound words that you've heard from me in faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. He said, now follow the pattern of sound words that you've heard from me. Notice, he says, follow the example I've set. Then finally, for this part, Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus, which is after Timothy. So Titus after um, chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. Again, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, when he first called him in John chapter 21, he says, I need you, Peter, to be an example said, feed my sheep. So we need examples, right examples. So Titus chapter 2, verse 7, listen to this. It says, show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. Someone say the word model. Model. Model, model of good works. You know, in the, in the time in which we live, let's say in this, in this very um, fashion conscious Age, young people, even though they like to say they're um, individualistic and unique, oftentimes what are they doing? They're following someone else. They're following a model. They're dressing like a certain influencer. Do you hear what I'm saying? So that influencer is what? An example, a model. So Paul, Paul, so Paul is telling Titus here, he says, Show yourself in all respects to be a model. Again, someone say model. Mm-hmm. Model of good works. And in your teaching, show dignity, integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. So the early church was big on its leaders being examples, not superstars. Not people put on a pedestal, but examples. And we said this, so now as I get into today, we're going to talk about relating correctly to your pastor. So everything now, we, in getting to where we're at about relating correctly to your pastor, we can't do that unless we did everything we talked about before. So you, um, you can relate correctly to your pastor when you know the purpose of your pastor. So that's why we taught on a number of things on about knowing the purpose of your pastor. So a pastor is there to be an example 
of one who loves and obeys Jesus. A pastor shows you, really is there to, um, to show you Jesus, to bring the message of Jesus and his kingdom, to model before you Jesus' character. Is everyone hearing me? So these messages, that's what we've gone through. A few weeks ago, we talked about the, the pastor showing you your inheritance in Christ Jesus as a believer. And recently we talked about being an example to you of the life, of the character, of the power and the ministry of Jesus. And all of that then is what? Is to inspire you, to compel you to follow who? Jesus. Everyone see this? It all makes sense. So, so now the, the pastor, the true pastor then, provides a picture of what you can be and what you are to be as a follower of Jesus. Everyone see that? So it's not like he's up here and you're down here. You gotta understand, now he's showing you what you are to be. So the character, the life that he's living is not unattainable. It is the goal for your life. He is a model for your life. And so this, everything I've just said before now about the character, the life of the pastor, the purpose of the pastor, all of that is what makes a pastor a safe guide. Without it, he or she cannot be a safe guide. Everyone understand that? So now moving forward now, um, you've got to remember God's purpose for you um, is to follow Jesus so much that you're like him. That's his whole purpose. So the whole purpose of, we could say the purpose of, of the pastor is for you to follow Jesus so that you're more and more like Jesus all the time. So now how do you correctly relate to your pastor? Go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. And we're just going to stay here for a few moments. So this is critical. So if I repeat myself, because I really want it to get into you so you can understand a pastor. Let me say it again. The purpose of the pastor is to be an example of one who loves and obeys Jesus. Purpose of a pastor is to show you Jesus. Purpose of a pastor is to bring the message of Jesus and his kingdom to you and to our communities. The purpose of the pastor is to model before you Jesus is Character. Someone say character. My purpose of the G, of a disciple of of a pastor is to show you your inheritance in Christ. Someone say inheritance. Mm-hmm. Purpose of a pastor is to be an example in life, in deed, in action, of what you are to be, what you are to be continually growing into as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everyone see that. And so really, a pastor is showing you your heavenly possibilities. Again, so it's not on a pedestal. It's not unattainable. He's, he's a pastor helping you to see Jesus. All right, 1 Peter chapter 5. Now listen to what it says here. Just one, a couple of verses here because it's really critical. Now he speaks to these pastors, but now he makes a little shift and he says, Now likewise, you who are younger and of lesser rank... Now, this is interesting. Listen to the language now. Be subject to your elders, shepherds, ministers, spiritual guides of the church, giving them due respect and yielding to their counsel. You should underline those words. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility as the garb of a servant so that its covering cannot possibly be stripped from you with freedom from pride and arrogance toward one another. For God sets himself against the proud, the insolent, the overbearing, the disdainful, the presumptuous, the boastful, and he opposes, frustrates, and defeats them. But God gives grace, favor, blessing to the humble. Verse 6, therefore humble yourselves, Lower yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God that in due time he may exalt you. Cast in the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him 
for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Be well balanced, temperate, sober minded, be vigilant, cautious at, at all times, for that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Withstand him. Isn't that wonderful? See? Withstand him. He didn't say the devil is this unbeatable foe, does it? He said, no, withstand him, resist him. Be firm in faith. Against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, determined, knowing that the same sufferings that are pointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the world. So now go back to verse 5. A few things we're going to talk about how to relate correctly to your pastor. One of the first things he says now, write it down. You've got to receive the example of your pastor. Got to receive the example of your pastor. And the, that first word it says, it says subject. Be subject to your elders or your pastors. Now the word, you know that word subject means? To bring yourself under the authority of your pastors. Now listen to this carefully because you're going to know why I said everything I've said before we got to this place here. So the word says here, Peter saying now to the young, he said now you need to subject or bring yourself under the authority of your pastors. Now keep in mind, now so to bring yourself under the authority, but you gotta remember, I'm gonna repeat myself again, you've gotta know what is he saying to bring yourself under? And why? So now you should write down somewhere, this is not blind followership. So you've got to understand this. You've got to understand. A lot of believers don't know what we're teaching. That's why a lot of them have gotten in trouble following wrong people. I said it before, maybe there was in the 70s, there was a man, Jim Jones, initially a Pentecostal preacher. And what did he end up doing? Bringing hundreds of people, told them to sell their houses, give him lots of money, buy property in Guyana. Many of them went, took, you know, relocated, left their families, and took Kool-Aid eventually and killed themselves because he told them to. I see they would never have done that if they were truly following Jesus. Amen. And if they knew what we're talking about today. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. But people might not go as extreme as that. Mm -hmm. But they're listening to people who are saying wrong things. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? And so now, so that's why you've got to pay attention. When I tell you pay attention, I really mean pay attention. But now, why would Jesus, through Peter, tell you now, submit to your leaders? He's qualified it by the things we've said before. So now, remember, you're submitting to one who is an example. Someone say example. Yeah. An example of one who follows Jesus, one who is obeying Jesus, one who is living according to the word, the dictates of the kingdom of God. Now, this is why you need to be in fellowship with your heavenly father yourself. You need to know God for yourself. Are you listening to me? So because you're, when you're in fellowship with Jesus, when you know the word of God, when you're praying in the spirit, then you will know if a spiritual leader is going off. Does anyone hear what I'm saying? But because a lot of time, a lot of this is a kind of loosey-goosey things. It's just, it's just a religion. It's not real Christianity where you know God for yourself. And so oftentimes it's just people blindly following someone. Just because someone has a, you know, let's say, so not like in this age of technology and social media, just because someone has, let's say, thousands or millions of people following them, doesn't mean they're right. <laughs> you understand? It doesn't mean they have the truth that's directing their communication and, uh, and messages. Scott, you say you've got to, you have a responsibility. So now, remember, the purpose of a leader, of a pastor, is to take you, help you to take on the life and character and ministry of Jesus. Always remember that. So that's the, that's the context where it you say now, submit to their authority. Because your submission to their authority helps them to, help, to lead you in following Christ accurately. Everyone see that? Is that clear to everybody? This is really, really important because we're saying some things here that when you talk about submission, you've got to really get that right. 
It's subjecting yourself, bringing yourself under the authority of someone who's a true example of Jesus in word, in deed, in lifestyle, in character. They're mirroring the life of Jesus. So they're a safe person to follow. Everyone got that? Really, really important. Next one, he says now, write down. So the first one is you need to submit to the authority of your pastors. You've got to allow, you've got to receive the godly example of your pastor. You've got to allow them. See that? So, Oh, by the way, remember, subject like submission is something you do. A real leader never makes you do anything. <laughs> never doesn't make you submit to them. It doesn't, fo- it doesn't threaten you to listen to them. No, that's something you must do. So that's why now God will speak to your heart if you're in fellowship with him about the character of your pastor to say, well, you can, you can follow that. That's a, he's a safe guide that I've prepared and helped. Amen? So as you do that now and you submit to your pastors, then, then it's going to help you to receive their example, receive their ministry. You receive their words. Their words become very powerful in your life. Now, the next word we see here, well, let me read that word when it says subject, because it does define it here. It says, giving them due respect. That's a good, that's a good translation in the Amplified here. So it says, giving them due respect. So that's a word then. If you're going to relate correctly to your pastor, you've got to be respectful. You've got to respect the authority of your pastors. And it says here, Amplified, write it down, yielding to their counsel. What does it say? Yielding to their counsel. Did do what? Yielding to their counsel. So the respect goes with the yielding. So that's all a part of the definition of submitting to the authority of your pastors. Now, these are some things that's really challenging things for most people to deal with, but it's really important. Again, Jesus put this in the book because if we can get this right, it will help us. Let me say this. I'm, I'm sure the person wouldn't mind if they hear this message, but I've spoken to a, a, a man and uh, many years later, and he said, you know, I, was, you ca- I came to you with my uh, fiance, and we wanted you to, to marry us, and you told us. You didn't tell us not to get married. You said, you know what? I believe you love each other and you'd be good. But you know what? You don't, don't get married right now. There's some things you need to take care of. There's some issues you've not resolved. And if you don't take care of it, it's going to really be hurtful. Well, many years later, guess what? The same man, I've got to give him credit for his humility, he said, Pastor Carl, you were right. Because we didn't listen to you. We went through a whole lot of things that we, prob- that we probably wouldn't have gone through if we had listened to you. Mm-hmm. You know what it says? Yielding to their counsel. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen to me. Mm-hmm. Now that man, you know, good man, both of his pa- the parents on both sides, instead of listening to me, went against what I said and basically forced them to, to, to go ahead and get married. Now I didn't say they shouldn't be married, but they needed to give a bit of time to address some issues. Well, they suffered because they didn't what? Listen. Do you hear what the scripture says here? Yielding to where their counsel. Now here's another look at the scripture. Then it says, clothe yourselves, and I love this, all of you with humility. Write down the word humility. Because it says all of you, that includes the pastors themselves. So you've got to understand why this is powerful. That's why we know then it's not this hierarchical system that much, many people believe where the pastor's up here and everybody's down here. Because mm-hmm. he says all of you, it's the entire congregation functioning in a spirit of humility, of being teachable. And the word humility means freedom from pride or arrogance. That means as past one of the things we must, must violently resist is pride. Getting in our minds that we're this Lord over God's people. No, no, you see, it says all of you, pastor and people, everyone, freedom from pride, arrogance. See that? So it's the state of being humble, willing to listen, the absence of feeling better than others. It is freedom from arrogance, conceit, 
egotism, loftiness, lordiness, pretense, pride, superiority. See, all of us functioning with this mindset. Everyone see that? So write it down, humility. Humility Humility must mark the life of this church, the life of this ministry, the life of this congregation. So with that, what will happen? You'll be teachable. You'll be able to allow God's word to help you in any area of your life. So that means now, no matter, you might be in a, in a situation that is a real challenge right now. Well, with a, in a spirit of humility, you'll be able to come to your pastor and say, you know what, I'm going through this situation right now. Can you help me? Help me with God's word. I know what the word says here, but um, maybe there's something else I need to know to get through this situation. Does anyone hear what I'm saying here? There's a spirit of what? Humility. So then again, first we said there's subjection, submitting yourself to your pastors, allowing them to, giving them authority to speak to you. See, that's what that is, giving them authority to speak into your life, to to guide you with God's word because they themselves are replicating the example, the life, the love, the character of Jesus. Is that clear to everybody? Number three, we said, write it down, a constant attitude of humility. We're talking about relating, how to relate correctly to your passage. See, you've got to maintain a constant. This, you've got to be vigilant about this. Because it says, therefore, read, I think it's verse, um, verse six. Therefore, humble yourselves. After he already talked about humility, he said, therefore, because of what I said before, humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Does that mean that, see, so what must mark the Christian church is what? It's a spirit of humility. You see that? It's a spirit of humility. So again, freedom from a spirit of, of, um, of superiority looking down on one another. And he said, all of us. I just love that. So that means it's the same spirit in the pastor that's in the congregation. What's powerful. And this protects pastors from being dictators, from using their position to hurt people or rip people off or be deceptive. It's this beautiful spirit of humility. So a constant, write down, a constant attitude of humility. Again, we've got, and so, and it says this, clothe yourselves, didn't it say that in one of the, in one of the, it it said that in verse, um, excuse me, verse five, it says, clothe yourselves, all of you with humility. And it says in the Amplified, as a garb, clothe is something you put on. So I mean, you know, if you can put something on, you can put something off. So there's a spirit of humility we must constantly keep on. Have you got your humility garment on today? Are you wearing it? It says, you know, so as a garment, so that its covering cannot possibly be stripped from you with freedom from pride and arrogance. And we know if I'm arrogant, no one can talk to me. No one can correct me. Is anyone hearing me? So that means all of us having a spirit of, of, of humility. We're willing to be taught. We're willing to be corrected. Why? Well, we're all going to make mistakes because we're human. But what protects us is a spirit of humility. God can use people to help us. Is anyone hearing what I'm saying here? To help you so that your life is taking on the character of Jesus. So now, constant um, attitude. Write down attitude. Write down the word attitude. Because if if you're arrogant and prideful, it becomes an attitude. And what's happened with some believers? Some of you watching me right now, wherever you are, what's happened is this. Sometimes you're failing in life because you're entrenched. The spirit of that attitude of rebellion is inside you. You live in it. You walk in it. That, that insistence that you want, no one is going to talk to me. No one's going to tell me what to do or how to live. See, that's an attitude of rebellion. That's a spirit of, we could say, of arrogance, of pride. We've got to watch that. Everyone see that? Or we should say, better say, we better get it out of our lives or keep it out of our lives. And so, um, so pastors lead from an attitude of wanting to see people follow and imitate the character 
and life of Jesus. I've got to keep saying that to you so you can keep in mind that's the purpose of the pastor's ministry. It's always to get people to follow Jesus. You see that? And so in one sense, when we look at that, when we tell you follow us, we're really saying, listen, the pressure's on us. And I'm not going to say pressure, but there's the consciousness this. I must be um, modeling before people the life of Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? So in, in our day and age, what's happened? That's why I'm watching last 10, 20 years in North American church. What do we say? Oh, I'm just a sinner. Oh, I'm just a man. They never say that in the New Testament. They said, no, you're an example. <laughs> so you better make changes to be like Jesus so that people can follow you and not go wrong. Do you see the difference there? And oh, I mean, you know then, if we're humble, we're willing to say, Lord, forgive me. I missed it here. There's repentance. What does it say for you and I? When you miss it, in a relationship, could be with you. you realize even families fight among themselves. And that will be bad if Christians, think about this now, Christians fighting, why? Because they're not humble. They're full of pride and arrogance, not willing to go back to a brother or a sister or a parent and say, you know what, I missed it. Please forgive me. And call themselves Christians, by the way. Is anyone here what I'm saying? Yes. People fighting over money, lying over money, doing all kinds of terrible things to one another and call themselves Christians. Is it, and wonder why their children want nothing to do with who they call Jesus. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Why? Because, see, we've not modeled the life of Jesus. So that's what it's all about. It's all about patterning after Jesus. Just give me a few minutes and we'll quit. So it's an attitude, it's, right? It's an attitude. You've got to check your attitude sometimes. So humble believers who truly seek to imitate and follow Christ. That's what this is all about. So be humble. Follow his example. So follow your pastor's example in word, deeds, and actions. Hear, listen to, and obey your pastor as he teaches you the word of God. I listen to me. So more and more, a pastor isn't just looking for a crowd. They're looking for people who want Jesus. They're looking for people who want to be like Jesus. Why? The more and more I'm like Jesus, the more and more you're like Jesus, the better an example and influence you and I will be on our families, on our community, on those we come in contact with, those in your businesses and workplace. They'll have an example of Jesus that they can see in flesh and bone. That's what Jesus wants. Kind of hear an amen, somebody. Amen. amen. A few points I need to say. So you've got to be willing to listen. Got to listen to your pastors. Got to listen to the word of God. Listen to, are you listening to me? When they present the word of God to you, don't just look at it as an opinion of man. Say, this, that's God's word. I'm going to incorporate it in my life. I'm going to be like that. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to live like this. Be willing to serve and assist your pastors. Now, think about it. If your pastors are helping people to, to um, show Jesus to people, helping people to follow Jesus and take on the life and character and ministry of Jesus, that means people's lives are being sound and whole. Their marriages are better and healthy. Their children are growing up with a right example and a safe environment. Then wouldn't you want more people mm -hmm. to come under that? And, and you know, pa pa um, Peter said it this way in one scripture. He says, the wonderful words of this life. So that means, wouldn't, so part of your responsibility is to help and assist your pastors to be a greater influence to other people. So you've got to help your pastors. So be willing to serve and assist your pastors in any way you can. Someone write that down. Are you listening to me? Amen. Ask the Lord, Lord, how can I help my pastors to reach people and carry out your assignment on their lives? That's a question that you should be asking. And get after it. Be busy. So, you know, say, Lord, I'm going to do that. Praise God. Amen. Um, your humility to God is shown in your humility towards people. Just write that down. That's part of that definition of humility. A truly humble person before God will be seen in how they relate to people. There will be that teachable 
There will not be this aura of superiority and condescension and arrogance and pride that comes from you. No, there'll be this spirit of humility and service that is coming out from you. When people are around you, man, they'll feel good. There's something about that, that spirit of humility. It, 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 and it blesses people. It uplifts people. Helps people to feel good about themselves. Helps, um, to, helps them to have hope no matter what they're going through. All right, I've got to wrap this up. So again, ask the Lord, Lord, how can I serve and assist my pastors? They're an example. You've sent them here. You sent them to me, an example to me. How can I help them to carry out that ministry? That's really important. Ask, you better get after it. Now, now, real quickly here, number um, five. I know I said that. Oh, cares, casting all your cares. I thought this was interesting because this verse is following the same subject. Casting all the, the, your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. That means there's going to be cares, anxieties, worries that will come to disconnect you from the place God's given you with your pastors. Are you listening to me? There are, there are cares, there are worries, there are things that's going to seek to draw you away from relating correctly to your pastor. Write it down. That's why it says you got to cast those cares upon the Lord for he, he cares for you. Are you listening to me? So you, there's some decisions you've got to make. Lord, no matter what, I'm going to always make, I'm, gonna, I'm guarding this relationship you've given me with your pastors. This is going good now. Praise God. Amen. You've given these. Now, remember, all of this goes, if you're hearing this for the first time, this message, and you've not heard what we've shared the last six, seven weeks, please go back and listen to those messages. Because all of this has to be taken in context. Think about it now. So God's, you know, God's given me this man, this woman of God, as my pastors. He's given them as an example, a model for my life. Think about that. He, so that means God is so serious about you growing and looking and being and talking like Jesus in every arena of your life. He's given you pastors. That means you've got to make sure you protect that relationship. Everyone see that? you got to protect that relationship. So those cares, those worries, those things are things designed to pull you away from that example Jesus has provided. Write it down. Are you listening to me? Everyone hear that? Can I hear an amen? Somebody. Got to watch that. Next one. Um, it says resisting the devil. So you got it right down, down. I won't say much about it. Resist the devil. Again, all of this, it's a, it's, it goes in line. There are thoughts, there are strategies the devil will even put in your mind to draw you away from receiving the example and ministry of your pastors. You've got to be quick to identify them and resist them. There are thoughts he will bring to you to what? Get you not to, to get you to unplug, to not listen to your pastors, to not receive their example, to not submit to them, to not serve and assist them in helping them carrying out their assignment in being the example God's called them to be. Are you listening to me? You got to be quick to resist those thoughts. And then finally, number seven, maintain and develop a spirit of submission and humility. Remember, all of this is for the purpose of you being, walking, talking, looking like Jesus. Are you listening to me? Pastors are what? Primarily, main call, examples. The way they speak, their attitude, again, it's not cop, you know, not dressing the same way and, you know, just mimicking everything externally. But we're talking the quality of their words. Mm -hmm. You take on that spirit. Their compassion and love, that you take that on. Their integrity and dignity, you take that on. Mm -hmm. It's all about emulating the life of Jesus. Can you imagine dealing with somebody and you know what they say to you, you can always believe it. Think about that. If someone says, if, if you borrow me, borrow me this money, I will give it back to you and you can take it to the bank. Hey, listen, that's someone who will never lie to you. You realize we say that about Jesus, but God's plan is that people can say that about us. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so if we take that on, imagine you, I live like this. 
You like live like this. You take that out to your families. Boy, you talk about the influence we can have. Everyone got that? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the word of God today. Thank you for your people who have attentively received God's word today as you've anointed us to share this message. This series on the importance of your pastor and this message today about relating correctly to your pastor. Father, I thank you for the people of Foundation for Life who have heard that word today. And I thank you that as they hear hear the word of God, accept it and believe it and act upon this word. It will produce great fruit in their lives. And it will produce fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. Father, thank you for raising up this congregation to be an example of a local church. Praise God, following Jesus, who are true disciples of Jesus. Pastors, believers, who are all clothed with humility, serving one another. People who who correctly relate to and submit to the the authority of their pastors. Taking on their example. Taking on the example and the model of their character, of their word, of their behavior. Father, help us to be examples of the believer in word, in deed, and doctrine. Father, help every person in and of foundation for life. Every person who's received the word of God today, help us to rise up, to take on a higher standard. In fact, the standard of your kingdom, the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Use the people of Foundation for Life to be a blessing. Praise God. Use their words to bring healing and hope and help to the people in their sphere of influence. Father, give them boldness to bring good news to that person who's discouraged and disheartened. Cause them not to close their mouth when they have the message of hope. Give them courage and strength. Use them even to lay hands on the sick and that the sick will recover. Father, we thank you for your people today. And we thank you for the blessing of God in this church in this family, in this assembly. Use us like yeast, praise God, like seed in this community, in our city, in our region, to bring the life and the example and the power of Jesus Christ to our realm of influence. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Praise God. Is anybody sick today in your body? We're going to pray for you. In the name of the Lord, if anybody wants us to pray for healing for their bodies, let's just pray for you in the name of, just stand up, we're going to pray for you. Praise God, if you want us to agree with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Everybody else, just just close your eyes, just give us a few moments before we dismiss the service. We want to pray and believe God. Let's stretch your your hand forth to our sister right now. Father, we thank you for the life of Jesus. Thank you for the life of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you for the same spirit life that raised Jesus from the dead. We declare in Jesus' name, it goes into our sister's body even now to effect a complete healing and a complete cure in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the judgment written that Jesus himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses for the purpose that with long life you will satisfy us and show us your salvation. So we believe right now, praise God, our sister. Thank you for the a long life. Praise God that she lives as long until she's satisfied in a healthy body. We speak life and health and restoration to her organs to her lungs, her kidneys, her heart. Praise God, her blood vessels. We speak the life of Jesus to flow all throughout her body now. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Well, praise God. We want to thank everybody for joining us, even online. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We consider you part of, part of our family. And so we bless you. And pray God's blessing over you and your family today. And we pray in the name of Jesus that our God will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I want you to be encouraged that you are loved by the Lord and you are loved by this, these the pastors here and by this, the, our church family. We love you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. So until next time, God's richest and best be to you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, amen.